ECDL Advanced Word Lesson 22 Names Names can be used to represent the contents of a cell or a range of cells to make referencing them easier. For example, a formula might be equals D34 minus D67 and the cell references would have to be traced back to see what they represent. If D34 represents income and D67 represents expenditure, names could be used so that the same formula can be entered instead of as equals D34 minus D67, it could be written as equals income minus expenditure, thereby making it easier for anyone viewing the formula to understand what it is. Any cell in a worksheet can be given a name by using the define name command or by typing directly into the name box up here. For this name to be used as a reference in formulas, the command apply names must be used. So for the purposes of this exercise, we've opened the workbook VAT. And in cell C6, we want to enter the formula to calculate the VAT. Now remember, this will have to use absolute cell referencing. So the formula we're going to use is equals C5 times $B$15. And then press enter. If we copy this formula across the row into D6 and E6, we can then complete the total price row by adding the price to the VAT. Now for this example, we don't want to use the auto sum command. So, click on cell B15, which is the VAT rate and enter the new rate of 20%. The use of names could make the formulas in this worksheet easier to understand. So, click on cell B15, select Formulas, and then select Define Name. This will be in the Defined Names group. We want the name to be VAT rate, which is capital V-A-T, then an underline, and then capital R, little a-t-e. We can't use spaces within names, so be careful that we're using the underline rather than the space. And then press OK. If we select Name Manager, we will see that now we have a named range or named cell which is called VAT rate, currently has the value 0.2 and also what it refers to. If we press edit, the suggested name could be overwritten, but as VAT rate is a suitable name, we're perfectly happy, let's just click OK. Now as an aside, when we do this new name, it picks its suggestions from any nearby labels, but automatically replaces spaces with underlines, as we've mentioned, because spaces are not allowed in names. If there are no suitable suggestions, you'll find the name box will be left blank. Let's press OK and close. Now what we'll see, I'm going to click away now, but if we click back to B15, if we look up at the names box over here, you'll see that instead of saying it's B15, it actually gives it the name of VAT rate. Next, let's move to cell C6. The cell contents still reference $B$15. So the cell has been named but the name is not used anywhere yet. So, if we select the arrow next to define name, we will be offered the opportunity to apply names. So select apply names from that drop-down list. A list of available names is displayed, but in this case, just VAT rate. Click on OK to apply this name to the worksheet. Note, 
that the formula in C6 now shows C5 times VAT rate. And the other VAT cells are similar. Let's click across. Over here equals D5 times VAT rate equals E5 times VAT rate. And then the final one is not using that because it's using the sum command to calculate that one. Cells and ranges can also be named by selecting the required cells and then typing them directly into the name box. So let's select the range C5 to E5 and type in the name box price. Then press enter to complete the naming process. Next, click away from the range and click the name box drop down and select VAT rate. We'll find that cell B15 is highlighted. If we display the price range, it will now highlight the whole of C5 to E5. As an aside, single cells can be named and used in precisely the same way. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is to save this workbook as VAT2 and leave the workbook open for the next lesson, lesson 23, when we'll be discussing using names in formulas. Okay, I look forward to seeing you then.